Rise and shine. Rise and shine. Chop, chop. Rise and shine. Rise and shine. It's a beautiful day. Rise and shine. Rise and shine. Rise and shine. Rise and shine. You guys are nerds. This is exactly what the nerds want. Our name shall become legend. Spoken in hushed tones by nerds across the galaxy. If you build it, nerds will come. Nerds must love this place. They think we're a bunch of nerds, and I'll tell you something. I think they're right. Let, let the nerds take over. Let the nerds take over! Rise and shine, nerds. Grab your coffee, wipe the sleep from your eyes, and turn up the volume as we kick off your day with Love Thy Nerds' official morning show here on YouTube and LTN Radio. I'm Radio Matt. I'm the director of content and resources for Love Thy Nerd. And I'm Deidre, world record holder for Most Eyes Rolled. Welcome to Season 2 of Rise and Shine, Nerds. This week, we'll be talking about the only real news in Hollywood right now, the writer's strike. Uh, Today, we want to look at the timeline and just see where things stand. Um, So first, let's let's jump back to where it started. Let's give you the history lesson, okay? So in mid-February, Hollywood Studios saw the writing on the wall so to speak, uh, mm-hmm. began to prepare for a strike of the, the WGA, the Writers Guild of America. The WGA met in late February to vote on the key demands before bargaining with studios. And here's what they want. Here's a big one. It's called, uh, it's called mini rooms. They want to end the use of what are called mini rooms. A mini room is essentially a smaller writer's room with only a handful of writers. This is not necessarily the room. This like okay. the writer's room, you know, the team. <laughs> right. It's only a handful of writers who are set to take care of the first 10 weeks of a series. They are paid scale minimum. They are given no promise of continuing with the show, uh, but at the time are not allowed to seek other work. They also do not get to be a part of the production or the post-production process. Usually there are writers on set during a show as it's filming in case things need to be changed or reworked or whatever. Not allowed to be a part of that process. These writing these writing jobs that lay the groundwork for franchises are treated as gigs. Hmm. And so you're not actually hired. You're, you know, it's a contractor, essentially. Right. Uh, and when the show takes off, they're given no credit. Hmm. And what's even worse is that it's usually for the first 10 weeks. If you think about like a, a series on TV, that's going 26 weeks, 24 weeks. You know, it's a long time. Right. A lot of streaming shows, that's the whole season. Oh, that's true. Like Strange New Worlds. Mm-hmm. Every season of Strange New Worlds, only 10 episodes. I don't know if they're doing many rooms in Strange New Worlds. I'm not trying to paint them that way, but I'm just no. Seasons are shorter on streaming. Right. Uh, number two, they want increased contributions to the union's health and pension plans. Three, they want higher minimum pay across all categories. Those are standard and strikes usually. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Four, they want standardized compensation, whether content is released in theaters or on streaming platforms. Uh, distri- despite the streaming boom, median writer pay has actually fallen in the last decade. Mm. And then number five, they want regulation of artificial intelligence in writing. Writing jobs should be protected, and AI should only be used as a helpful tool, not for content creation. So these demands were approved by the WGA members nearly unanimously. Uh, March 20th uh, is when the negotiations began, and they were tense. Uh, Neither side really willing to budge on pretty much anything. Hmm. Uh, Talks continued for weeks, but to no avail, WGA moved to strike on May 2nd. Uh, a month later, SAG-AFTRA, which stands for the Screen Actors Guild, American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, uh, voted to strike as well in support of the WGA. Uh, so this went into effect in July. Uh, the Oppenheimer cast had an historic viral moment as they walked out of their own movie premiere in the UK hmm. due to the strike going on. Uh, like, they were there, and they left. Hmm. Like, it's a big... Big deal. Right. Scripted TV production and movie production has virtually stopped at this point, uh, aside from a handful of productions that have been given a, granted a waiver to continue working. Uh, NBC Universal did the petty thing and had all the trees along the picket line route outside their studios trimmed to nubs so strikers would have no <laughs> shade or comfort. <laughs> <laughs> San Diego Comic-Con comes and goes with little Hollywood involvement, uh, as even actors who attended aren't allowed to discuss projects. With no sign uh, of the end in sight, there's little to promote from studios. Uh, according to the union strike rules released on uh, the Thursday after 
SAG after joined, actors are not allowed to promote their work through premieres, interviews, personal appearances, conventions, fan expos, or festivals. Wow. So you can't talk about the show that you're on mm-hmm. or the movie that you're doing. Mm-hmm. Can't talk about it. On August 1st, three months after the strike began, the Writers Guild and the Hollywood Studios agreed to renewing talks. And this leads us to kind of the last big update uh, as of the time of the show prep. This is from August 5th. So we have an article here from The Nerdy. It says, as Friday dawned in Hollywood, the movie and television industry held its collective breath uh, if some movement would occur on the strikes. By late night, those hopes were gone for now. As Writers Guild of America, like, uh, strike creeps up on its 100th day, the... uh, the uh, another Ackerman that I don't want to confuse us all with, but the Hollywood execs reached out uh, for the possibility of reopening talks. The meeting took place as planned on Friday, but from the notes shared by WGA members on Friday night, it seems things did not go as planned. They wrote, Dear members, Ellen Stutzman and Tony Siegel met with Carol Lom- Lombardini and uh, the staff this afternoon for what Carol stated was a confidential sidebar to discuss resuming negotiations for uh, the new NBA, the new agreement. Uh, topics included... Uh, press blackouts also discussed was potential negotiation protocol and a preview of the issues each side intends to bring back to the table upon resumption. As of now, there is no agreement on these items because the exec said that they needed to consult with their member studios before moving forward. Our intention after the confidential meeting was to send a simple email to you, letting you all know that we would get back to you as to when there's more specific information about resuming negotiations. However, Before the negotiating committee even had a chance to meet, our communications department began hearing from the trades asking for comments on studio leaked rumors of the contents of the confidential meeting. Hmm. This is after the execs spent much of the meeting emphasizing the need for a press blackout. Since the studios are leaking to the press, we need to let you know what was said in the meeting. First, Carol informed us that the DGA deal would be the deal uh, on any pattern issues. She stated that we're uh that they were willing to increase their offer on a few writer specific tv minimums and willing to talk about ai but that they were not willing to engage on the preservation of the writer's room or success-based residuals she did not indicate willingness to address screenwriter issues appendix a issues and many of the other proposals that remain on our list on behalf of the guild ellen reiterated the expectation that all the fundamental issues over which writers have been striking these past three months would be addressed in this new contract and that no segment of the membership would be left behind ellen made clear that in addition to a comprehensive response from the execs on our protocol in all work areas we need to address issues arising from the strike including a health care benefit extension and additional plan funding reinstatement of striking writers and arbitration of disputes arising during the strike. We will also seek the right for individual WGA members to honor other unions' picket lines as they have honored ours during the strike. Carol's response, something she repeated three times during the meeting, echoes what was written in that press statement yesterday. People just want to get back to work. Hmm. We agree, with the caveat that those conditions that have made writers' jobs increasingly unattainable must be first addressed. Your committee remains willing to engage with the companies and resume negotiations in good faith to make a fair deal for all writers, even with this early confirmation uh, that the playbook continues. Uh, But rest assured, this committee does not intend to leave anyone behind or make merely an incremental deal to conclude the strike. In solidarity, WGA Negotiating Committee. (sighs) That was a lot. That was a lot. (laughs) But essentially, they met to see if they could meet came to some sort of agreement, <laughs> agreed on a press blackout until the time came, and the Hollywood execs leaked the stuff anyway, and so mm. they had to leak the stuff. Mm. So we have now surpassed 100 days of striking. Uh, both sides have agreed to keep talking. Um, the two sides seem to be citing their positions backed by two different things. Hollywood saying the whole industry is struggling right now, and streaming isn't making money from almost all services. The writers say that execs themselves are making more money than ever mm-hmm. and that mm-hmm. gaining that wealth but cutting costs uh they're gaining that wealth but cutting costs on actual people mm. what do you think yeah i don't know they're <laughs> like, i mean they they kind of they have to agree to keep talking right what's what's the other what's option? the alternative yeah <laughs> we just shut it all down that's it. That's the mm-hmm. end. I mean, 
Yeah. I mean, I I agree that the the higher ups get paid a lot. Yeah. And it's I mean, I mean there should be room execs, for the people that write the stuff. Yeah, execs <laughs> and and certain celebrities just make stupid amounts of money. Right. Stupid money. Right. And like I, I is it is it a time to back away from that practice? Mm. Like how can you make a single movie and get paid like eight, eighty million dollars? Right. And that be justified? Like, I just, I mean, uh, I don't know. It's, it's uh, when, when you could be paid something more reasonable, that's still more money than most people are going to see in their whole lives for a single project. Mm-hmm. You could be paid something more reasonable. And so the people in the lower part of the production, the writers and the people working the thing, actually get paid enough to you know pay their rent, not mm-hmm. live in their car, not have to work a second job. Mm-hmm. I feel like that would be worth it. It would take $1 million away from the top actor or top exec or whatever and just fund the rest of it. It right. seems like it would should be so easy. And it's like, well, no, we need Robert Downey Jr. to make $85 million for this project. And so you need to eat ramen. <laughs> breakfast lunch and dinner in the writer's room please thank you uh, I, don't I don't know, know. It, it it but that's also the whole point of america i mean at some point yeah I but mean, there's gotta be a capper right yeah yeah but then you start getting into socialism and mm, i i see that <laughs> Like that's, but this is really just about what the studios are willing to pay for. Yeah. Like yeah. they're willing to offer that money. Yeah. Knowing that it's going to take money away from the people that are building the thing. Mm-hmm. Robert Downey Jr. is a great actor. I'm not really trying to harp on him being the problem. He's not the problem. He's striking <laughs> along with everybody else. But I mean, he's one of the bigger names right. and, and that was always brought up as like, he always, he was making the most money in a lot of the Avengers movies or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I mean, would he have done it for less? I mean, it's just like, so we could pay everybody and pay our animators or whatever else. Uh, like it just, uh, the same thing with like sports athletes and things like that. I'm like yeah. sports athletes as opposed to <laughs> 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 like that. It's, it's just a stupid amount of money to play basketball. Understand. Right. <laughs> I don't understand why it's so much money. Uh, so as for the writers, the question really, it's, you know, in a hundred days, how are they surviving right now? Right. Um, right. Se- several of them are working other jobs, working in restaurants and things, mm-hmm. but there's also a, like a fund, a writer's guild fund that they've been putting into for years for when something like this happens. Uh, the rock has donated seven figures to the strikers uh, this past week. Uh, himself and so they're wow. they're getting by with what protection they have but who knows how long it's going to last mm-hmm. um it can't be drug out forever somebody's got to give right. that letter here is implying they're not giving on anything mm-hmm. and also saying that the execs are saying look we'll talk about one or two of these but we're not talking about any of that other stuff mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like you said it can't go on forever mm-hmm. or can it This week, we are taking a look at the writer strike. Today, we're going to look at everything being affected by the WGA strike and the Screen Actors Guild supporting strike. Uh, So let's take a look at uh, movies, first of all. All right. Uh, 20th Century Studios, The Amateur, upcoming thriller, the 20th Century Studios has shut down production during the film. It stars Rami Malek uh, and Lawrence Fishburne and a few others. Uh, it's based on a book of the same name by Robert Little and, is, and directed by James Haas from Slow Horses. The production is filming in England as of June, scheduled for release November 2024. We'll see if it makes it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the amateur is shut down. Lilo and Stitch, a live action remake mm-hmm. of Lilo and Stitch at Disney, uh, was filming in Hawaii. That has been shut down. Production was supposed to wrap by now, wow. early August, but it has been shut down. Marvel, uh, Blade has shut down 
uh, and uh, during the WGA strike and remain shut down, Thunderbolts pause production and remains paused. Deadpool 3 had completed the script going into the writer's strike, and, and we had talked about that. It actually moved it up. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the SAG AFTRA joining the strike uh, includes Ryan Reynolds, so he cannot be on set. So the movie was filming in London. Since late May, with Reynolds and Hugh Jackman, uh, Sean Levy is directing the film, which is still scheduled to be released on May 3rd, 2024. So we'll see. Mm. But as of right now, they're not filming. Venom 3, uh, not Disney Marvel, but still Marvel. Sony's Marvel franchise is shutting down as well. Venom 3, starring Tom Hardy, has paused. Uh, the crew had been given a warning of the shutdown a couple Mondays ago. Over at Paramount, they've been doing a Gladiator 2 sequel to 2001's Oscar-winning epic. Wow. Wow. Uh, it's uh, directed by Ridley Scott. Adds new stars, including Paul Mescal, Denzel Washington, and Pedro Pascal. Mandalorian himself. <laughs> uh, the film began production in June. It was reportedly two-thirds of the way through principal photography in Morocco. Uh, scheduled for release of November 24th of next year. Uh, but it is... It is also paused. Uh, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 2, the seventh movie, came out uh, the week of the SAG after strike beginning. Uh, the eighth movie was deep into production as it's you know, a part two, mm-hmm. but uh, it is now paused as well. Dead Reckoning Part 1 is the last major studio film to release before the SAG after joined the strike. Mm. Uh, Sony Pictures has Paddington in Peru, a.k.a. Paddington 3, uh, the threequel. Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen the first two. I haven't seen it. I've heard nothing but good things I about know. those first two I movies. I know. I'm like, why haven't I watched this? <laughs> it was supposed to begin filming in late July. It's on hold. Uh, Twisters, a disaster film from Universal Pictures, uh, suspended due to the strike. film began production in Oklahoma since May, but it is now... Suspended. Wicked Part One, a film, film version, film adaptation of Wicked. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, the film sets are empty. The production has ceased in the UK. Wow. Supposed to finish at the end of July. Not happening. Uh, Warner Brothers Discovery Beetlejuice Two, uh, the direct sequel to Tim Burton's 1988 film with Michael Keaton reprising his role. Uh, <laughs> it, with it's got Jenna Ortega and Winona Ryder and Catherine O'Hara in it. Uh, the production's almost done filming in London and apparently needed to film one more sequence oh. before the strike. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see. Set for release September 6th of next year. We'll see. Juror number two, the 42nd and reportedly last film from director Clint Eastwood has suspended production. Minecraft, the video game adaptation starring Jason Momoa, which I did not know this was happening. Me neither. Aquaman is <laughs> playing the main character in a Minecraft movie. Okay. Are they going to be squares? That's is it all cubes? I, like. If it's not, why are we making it? <laughs> uh, it? It was set to begin filming this month in New Zealand, but now will not begin until the strike is over. The film was dated for April 4th of 2025. Mortal Kombat 2, a uh, video game adaptation sequel to the 2021 film, was shooting in Australia. Uh, filming is expected to end in September, but it was suspended as well. Uh, granted a waiver, Bride Hard, an action comedy starring Rebel Wilson, was given permission to keep going. <laughs> Death of a Unicorn, <laughs> Jenna Ortega and Paul Rudd starred a father and daughter duo who accidentally run over a unicorn. <laughs> Are they just like... I really want to watch that. Eh, these ones aren't great ideas anyway. Y'all can keep going I thought, with yeah, it. I would assume it would be like, no, oh, these are really important and they need to come out. And nah, it's like, eh, ain't nobody watching this. <laughs> <laughs> Dust Bunny. Brian Fuller directing Mads Mickelson in a horror feature, which reunites the duo behind the MCB serial, in the NBC serial killer drama Hannibal. It's about a girl who is convinced there's a monster under the bed. Okay, well, whatever. The Dust Bunny is the monster. Uh, maybe that one was allowed because it's like set to come out in October. Or I don't know. Mother Mary, a new movie from writer director David Lyman, is a pop music drama with Anne Hathaway and Michael, Michael, no, Michaelia, Michaela. 
Coel. I don't know. Somebody. Uh, it's an independent movie, I guess. A24. Uh, the Killers Game, Ben Kingsley, Dave Bautista, Sofia Botella, uh, starring an action comedy based on an assassin who authorizes a hit on himself. These all sound fake. Okay. <laughs> Every, all, three, all four of these movies so far sound fake. <laughs> the Watcher is an independent film from director Ishana Night Shyamalan. Is that M. Night Shyamalan's daughter? Starring Dakota Fanning was granted a waiver. The film is independent. New Line uh, is on board to distribute the film, though. That's why it needs the waiver. Although deals have not been signed yet, so The Watchers is still technically independent. The production is filming, and it doesn't tell me what the story is. Mm. All right. Mm. Well, that's where we're at. <laughs> so those are the movies. Let's move on to the TV shows. Um, hold on. Oh, I got another movie here. Captain America: New World Order is mm. on hold. Um, all right, script to TV. Here we go. Airing on ABC, Abbott Elementary has closed. The show is due to start writing on May second. Uh, the Lord of the Rings Ring of Power from Amazon Prime Video. Mm. Two weeks of filming left. The mm. show is moving forward with production. The okay. showrunners will be absent from the set due to the strike, which may impact the creative vision and continuity, but it's still going forward. Wow. That's interesting. Mm. On Call, the new series uh, from producer Dick Wolf, Law & Order, shut down production due to picketing. The show follows a veteran female training officer and her rookie ride-along in Long Beach. Uh, Blade Runner 2099, new series, uh, was set to film in Northern Ireland. Screen Commission said Northern Ireland screen confirmed Blade Runner 2099 has been delayed. Uh, et, 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 a new show from Marvelous Miss Maisel creators, Amy Sherman Paladino. You like that show, don't you? Etole, maybe? Den, maybe, etole, etole. That sounds like a... The show has two season order from Amazon Prime Video scheduled to start production in June, but it's shutting down. Apple TV, before a limited series, also known as Winston, starring Billy Crystal, has been filming in New Jersey and was shut down in WGA picketers uh, already. The studio is pausing production until the strike's over. Loot shut down uh, when pickets disrupted filming. Metropolis, a year-long adaptation of the 1927 Fritz Lang classic sci-fi film Metropolis, is coming to a close. Show has been prepping in Australia for a summer start, but producers uh, have canceled the show due to increased costs and uncertainty related to the ongoing strike. It's canceled. Wow. Gone. Severance, yeah. the Apple TV uh, show, has officially paused production due to pickets with members uh, in the International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees and Teamsters Union refusing to cross the picket lines in New York City. Sinking Spring, uh, was shut down by picketers, shows about lifelong friends who pose as DA agents to rob a country house. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, CBS, FBI Most Wanted, the spinoff of the FBI franchise from Dick Wolf, haunted, haunted, halted by picketers in New York. Uh, they're finishing filming for the currently airing fourth season, so the fourth season will be either cut short or split in half. Hmm. Jeopardy. Co-host Maya Bilik, uh, whatever her name was, uh, Blossom, uh, is stepping away from hosting during the strike. However, production is said to continue with fellow co-host Ken Jennings stepping in. Uh, the show is produced by Sony and syndicated through CBS. The writers have been seen picketing in L.A. And so what they are going to be doing is reusing old questions. What? From, seri from seasons in the past. Yeah. So that's interesting. That's weird. Disney Plus, uh, Agatha, Coven of Chaos, the WandaVision spinoff with the, the witch lady, mm -hmm. uh, is underway, has not been impacted by the strike. Uh, Andor, uh, their scripts were completed for the second season uh, and production is continuing. However, showrunner to Tony Gilroy has ceased his production duties, both writing and non-writing. Uh, bigger shutdown might still be underway. Bunked, a uh, Disney Channel show, pause production during the strike. Eight episodes remain to be filmed in the season. Daredevil Born Again, the, the reboot of the Daredevil show for Disney Plus, pause production, uh, but only for a day. <laughs> <laughs> Says pause production for a day due to picketing. So that might still be going on. Okay. The Wonder Man production in Los Angeles has shut down due to picketing. 
Uh, on Freeform, we got Good Trouble, Picketers Halted, production of season five of Good Trouble, which is filming in Los Angeles. The show does plan to finish filming the current season. While you were breeding, uh, Chris Newman, showrunner for the upcoming Freeform show based on her memoir. Maybe this isn't a shutdown post-production, uh, so they're done. On Fox, You Bet Your Life, the game show is halted production during the strike as host Jay Leno stands with the Writers Guild and has been spotted handing out donuts at the picket line. <laughs> Show's been suspended until the strike is over. Family Guy and American Dad have both ceased production. Seth MacFarlane's a big WGA guy. Uh, so all of those are uh, wrapping up for now. On FX, American Horror Story Season 12 is disrupted. Uh, the show is still in production, though, uh, in New York City. The Old Man, filming Season 2 of the Jeff Bridges drama, has been suspended. Uh, production was complete on four episodes of the second season. Five scripts of, se of the season have been written. On Max, A Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, The Hedge Knight. I don't know what that is. George R.R. R. Martin, I guess. Okay. It's a Game of Thrones prequel. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> it's shut down. Duster, uh, the Max period drama from J.J. Abrams and Latoya Morgan has shut down production in New Mexico. Uh, Hacks. Filming of the Emmy Award winning comedy Hacks about a comedy writer has paused production during the strike. House of the Dragon, I thought that was the prequel to Game of Thrones. Maybe it's another one. All scripts have been turned in. Production is scheduled to continue. Rewrites and reshoots, though, will be done after the strike. The Penguin, the spinoff from the, uh, Bat the new Batman movie mm -hmm. uh, with Colin Farrell as the Penguin, that's been suspended due to picketing. The show was filming in New York, and Teamsters and local guides refused to cross the picket line. Guilds. Not guides. Pretty Little Liars Summer School shut down production. The Last of Us, Euphoria, and White Lotus. Uh, all of those will be significantly delayed. Password on NBC Game Show has paused filming. Night Court, the uh, reboot of the classic NBC show, has paused production because uh, it needs writers on set for punch ups. <laughs> Big Mouth on Netflix was in its eighth and final season. Uh, the room is shut down. Cobra Kai has closed the writer's room for season six. Emily in Paris has been delayed. Stranger Things has shut down. Unstable is also shut down. The Upshaws has filmed 10 of the 12 episodes for the upcoming season, but has paused the production. Zero Day, this is the, a big one, starring Oscar winner Robert De Niro in his first scripted TV role and directed by Emmy winner. Uh, and Directors Guild of America president, Leslie Lanka Gladder, zero day shutdown production in New York City. It's unclear when the show will resume production. Uh, and the Writers Guild and SAG after are still on strike and everything's authorized. A tentative deal could go back to the bargaining table if members do approve to give this a waiver, I guess, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Wow. Robert De Niro's first scripted TV role. That's hmm. interesting. Uh, Nickelodeon, The Really Loud House, second season shut down. Unclear if production will resume once the strike is over. Paramount Plus, Evil, wrapped production early because of the picketers. It will have a shortened season. Yellowstone 1923 uh, has content produced and ready to go. Hmm. Uh, but it might still be delayed indefinitely. Wow. Okay. Uh on Showtime, the Ch the Shy, which is about Chicago, uh, has been shut down for the foreseeable future. Billions uh, refused to cross the picket line. Shut down production for uh, a couple hours during the first week of the strike. So that might still be going on. Uncoupled season two of the show, starring Neil Patrick Harris, is paused due to the strike. Yellow Jackets, after one day of writing, the writers' room for season three of the Showtime drama Yellow Jackets has paused. Wow. <laughs> P Valley on Stars, uh, not be filming until a fair deal is rich, reached. Uh, Power Book 2 Ghost, uh, spinoff from Power Book. <laughs> temporarily <laughs> shut down. <laughs> Power Book 3, also. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Und Ava Dulvarani Drama, an upcoming series from writer Ava. Okay, it's untitled. <laughs> Und? <laughs> Und Ava Drama Drama? Uh, untitled Drama. Uh, just a halted production. So it's not even a show that exists yet. They don't even have a title. Uh, yeah. Stars, the venery of Samantha Bird, pause production with two episodes to go due to the strike. 
Uh, award shows, MTV and movie and TV awards have been canceled. ACM awards are unaffected. American Country Music Awards unaffected. Uh, Television Academy honors canceled. Tony awards continuing, but without writers. Daytime Emmys, Emmys and primetime Emmys both postponed. Uh, talk shows that are still in production, The View, um, but without writers. They have a few writers for The View who will not be doing any work during the duration of the strike. <laughs> Live with Kelly and Mark, Tamron Hall, The Kelly Clarkson Show, all of those are still going on. Uh, the Talk and The Drew Barrymore Show no longer in production. Soap operas are on an extended summer break with only The Young and the Restless still airing. Uh, they are still being written by writers who have resigned their WGA membership and other members of production who are not on strike. Hmm. Uh, late night shows, almost immediately, all of the primetime shows, Jimmy Kimmel Live, Late Night with Steve, or Late Show with Stephen Colbert, Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, Late Night with Seth Meyers, Real Time with Bill Maher, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, The Daily Show, all of those... Uh, stop production hmm. pretty much the day of. It was like the next day. Like wow. once they gotten with it, rid of the shows they had already recorded, mm -hmm. they were done. Um, the only two late night shows that are still in production are Gutfield on Fox News and Watch What Happens with Andy Cohen on Bravo. Uh, Saturday Night Live also canceled the final three episodes of season 48. Um, Pete Davidson, Kieran Culkin, and Jennifer Coolidge were meant to host those three shows. Um, no more. It just it's done. They stopped. Stopped the season, which is weird. Wow. So that's uh, a lot. That was yeah. a lot of reading, a lot of shows, but that's everything that's being focused on. Mm -hmm. uh, that just it's not happening. A lot happening, like not happening right. <laughs> anymore. <laughs> so what do we expect next? Uh, last time we had a writer strike, we saw the rise of reality TV. Mm -hmm. as being a thing is more of that on the way i hope not <laughs> so we'll talk about that a little bit more tomorrow um any thoughts before we wrap up today i know today was mainly just information yep mm -mm. yeah not a lot of we talked about this not a lot of stuff i uh really want to see <laughs> it's appealing yeah yeah not a lot that's appealing to me like most of the stuff i'm like okay i can do without a few of the movies you know i want to see i want marvel to keep going even if their quality is being diminished lately. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 was really good. Yeah. I think it was really good. Yeah. So, you know, there's still hope. But we've been talking about the writer's strike this week, and today we'll be talking about whether or not it will be successful. But first, uh, we asked our Shinies what they thought. Uh, you can make your voice heard as well by joining our Discord, Discord community at lovethynerd.com slash Discord. Once you join and agree to the rules, simply visit channels and roles and click on rise and shine nerds to find our special category so we asked them do you think the rider strike will be successful as well as any other thoughts that you had on the situation and here's what you told us uh silver responded simply i just want my fall shows <laughs> <laughs> and crying emoji um mosaic fan art says i'm i sure hope so but being the, the grandpa of the group, uh, I don't know how much it will affect me. I mean, I'm just a few years away from watching reruns of Gunsmoke all day long. <laughs> Seriously, the ability for the studios to just use AI and not pay writers for all the streaming and everyone uh, that everyone is doing is uncool. Take a pay cut, you fat cats, or maybe just get more ad time at the beginning of the show to make up the money. Uh, Jonathan said there, there's a writer strike. I never watch live TV anymore. I had no idea. Uh, <laughs> Wandering Knight says, I think it'll be successful, but also there will be exploitation of loopholes to make it not successful. Hmm. Uh, Josh, the boss says, my question is, is the visual media getting to the same place? Is visual media getting to the same place music is? He says, uh, I've, I've read at least two reports from 2021 that have said that more people are listening to older music than newer release music, with some exceptions, of course, like Taylor Swift fans and stuff. He says, I find myself as an older person looking to reminisce more. Uh, the last film series I was excited about was Lord of the Rings, and the last TV series I was excited about was Burn Notice. <laughs> uh, maybe I'm old, but nothing hooks me anymore. Uh, That's called... 
Yeah, they're not doing it for you, dude. They're doing it for the, the generation <laughs> after you. <laughs> Sorry to I don't say. Know how, I don't know how old you are, but I know 18 to 35 is the demographic. <laughs> I am out of that demographic. They don't care about me. They don't care what I'm watching. Nobody. This month, This month, I'll be out of that demographic. You're still 35? Yeah. For, for, yeah, a little bit. For why a little bit. I, why do I think you're older all the time? <laughs> I'm not 38 yet. I'm 37. I keep. I'm. I'm pushing. You're 38 us to the, next month. Ugh. <laughs> ugh. <laughs> Throw up in my mouth. Uh. Yeah, that's what that means. It means you're getting older because I feel like the same thing happens. To think about like grandparents. What what music do they listen to? What shows do they watch? You know, uh, Mosaic Art mentioned watching Gunsmoke. Mm. Yeah, because that's what they're going to do. They're going to watch the things that they remember they like. So all this new stuff isn't coming out for you. Right. I was I was just thinking, <laughs> like, well, no, I really like Strange New Worlds and Lower Decks. And, like, I don't think that counts because <laughs> it's an established brand that existed already. Like, if this was a brand new sci-fi show i'm not sure i would have watched it i'm not sure i would have given it a chance mm -hmm. but it's because it's something that i watched star trek something that i watched as a kid and growing up that i like these now mm -hmm. and also the more uh the more like current sci-fi show discovery i don't really care for I like the ones that are more like classic Star Trek. Right, right. <laughs> so, or, or pay homage to classic Star Trek mm -hmm. like Lower Decks does. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm trying to think of the last <laughs> new show. That, Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso grabbed me. That's brand new. And it's a whole new kind of format of show compared to most everything else. But in reality, I'm not searching for, I'm not looking for new stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm going through The Office and Parks I'm, and Rec I'm, and Seinfeld. Say, and I'm just Frasier. continuously watching The Office. That's <laughs> that's all. <laughs> I'm right there with you, uh, <sighs> Tristan Birch. I love oh, the Mash. Adrian is a huge fan of Mash. It's it's my fave. Yeah. Uh, that's that's was that was like the go to gift for her when we were dating. Season of, next season. Next Mash, season of please. Mash. Yes. Every birthday, every Christmas, you get the next season of Mash. Mm -hmm. And there were a lot. There were a lot of Mash. Yeah. That show went on longer than the war did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Real good. I like it okay. Yeah. That was a little bit too old for me. Yeah. That was like, eh, that's, I like mm. I like the humor and I like the seriousness that they can also do they very did a, well. They did a really good job of balancing that. Yes. Uh, I really think Scrubs is a spiritual successor to MASH mm. in a lot of ways uh, because they they had that same ability. Yeah, that's true. To balance the absurdity. I'm going to be laughing they my head little, off and then yeah. pouring tears. They were, they were much more later. silly yeah. in Scrubs, much more <laughs> silly. The humor in MASH made more sense. Yeah. Like it was real observational humor, uh, kind of, but and some yeah. slapstick kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And uh, Scrubs was, was sillier and weird uh, daydreams and, you know, things like that. Yeah. But still, when they get to the serious stuff, golly, <laughs> I'm already, I feel it in my throat right now. The Where do you think we are right now? <sighs> that's, the thing, that's the thing that John and I have done to each other every now and then. We'll just, if we're in the middle of a conversation <laughs> and we both stop and we both stop talking, <laughs> it's like the first person to say, where do you think we are right now? <laughs> and we both want to cry. Oh, that's so sad. <clears throat> Joshua. Yes, that's it. You're old. <laughs> uh, and then Thray uh, said, success in a strike is really defined by lawyers. Uh, ever see suits now messier and uh, we might see what happens. Will a negotiation regarding wages and profits be completed in some form? I think so. But I think we'll likely see further negotiations among lawyers from all three major groups, the writers, the actors, the studios for the planned future drafting of policies regarding AI and the human right of one's own image, not as a part of the settlement. 
So that stuff will probably come later, she thinks. Hmm. These policies would then need to be presented to multiple governments for adapting into laws applicable for those countries. This is not going to be settled by Hollywood alone without the teeth of law to back it up culturally. I think that's true. With the AI and the, the stuff we were talking about, about human, mm-hmm. um, your human image, you know, all that stuff, there's, there's a whole sh- slew, <laughs> slew of laws that mm-hmm. need to be put into place mm-hmm. as this stuff develops. And I feel I'm so worried about the next few years mm-hmm. as we're like, AI is going to go bonkers and we don't have any of this stuff passed yeah. yet. Yeah. As <laughs> we we've have discussed, no regulation. Law is reactionary. Yes. To things. Exactly. That have happened. It is not. Before we do this, let's set some rules. It's. Now that this exists. Y'all did this. <laughs> these things went wrong, so we're going to put these rules in place. <laughs> yeah, and unfortunately that requires it all going wrong. When our wrong. world got taken over, so let's <laughs> let's put these laws in place. Okay. You remember when you made Skynet? <laughs> we're not going to do that again. We barely made it out alive. <laughs> this week we're talking about the writer's strike, and today we're asking the question, is this doomed to fail? Hmm. So first of all, Netflix and other studios aren't feeling the pinch yet. In fact, right now, the lower budget seems to be helping them. Mm. Uh, In an article from CBS News titled, Why the Actors and Writers Strikes are Good News for Netflix, it says this, Netflix, a major target of the current strikes in Hollywood writers and actors, has seen an unexpected cash boost from the two labor unions' actions. In a quarterly earnings report on Wednesday, Netflix said it expects to have at least $5 billion in free cash flow for 2023 because of reduced operational costs as a result of the strikes delaying production schedules. That's a significant increase from its previous estimate of $3.5 billion. The company plans to use some of the extra cash to buy back stock, it said. Hmm. Um, Netflix said in a letter to investors, we're currently running a bit above our targeted minimum cash level, so we expect to increase our stock repurchase activity in the second half of 2023, assuming no material changes in our business. The company's chief financial officer, Adam Newman, uh, detailed some of the reasons for the new cash boost in the investor call on Wednesday. In addition to the impact of the strikes, Newman said the company had early success with its crackdown on password sharing and plans to expand so-called page sharing to every country where it operates. Uh, The company added more than 6 million new paid subscribers in the second quarter of this year, including 1.2 million in the U.S. and Canada. Uh, The rest is just about paid sharing and stuff like that. But uh, But wasn't those new subscribers about their their no sharing passwords crackdown? Yeah. Yeah. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Well, uh, they did it. They did it a smart way. They're like, look. You can't keep doing this, but if you want to share your account with somebody else, here's a reduced price for their account. Hmm. So it's like instead of paying for two separate accounts, you get it for, you know, it's like adding a phone to your plan. Yeah, essentially. <laughs> it was smart. It was a smart way. Uh, but yeah, so Netflix, <laughs> and I'm, I'm assuming most companies are like, like well, we're not making any new shows, but we got a lot of money now. <laughs> Our budgets have nowhere else to go. Let's do it. Let's. You know. But that's going to hurt them later. Eventually it is. Yeah. But the, the whole idea is which one can last longer? Mm. Mm-hmm. Can the Writers and Actors Guild last longer? Right. Than the Hollywood studio execs with all this extra money that they don't have to spend right now during the strike? Gotcha. It's it's a tough thing. Studios know how to survive without new written content for a long time because it just happened with COVID. Right. That's true. So it's likely going to be many more months before the pressure really starts uh, hitting the execs. The pressure mm-hmm. to start the machine back up becomes vital. Um, so here's a, here's a bit from a, 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 an article in Crisis Magazine. It's a little, little bit of a chunk here. But it kind of frames where we are compared to the strike 15 years ago. Hmm. That was 15 years ago. (laughs) Oh, my God. Doesn't that hurt a little bit? (laughs) Doesn't that hurt to say? It was 2007 to 2008. It was 2023. (laughs) 
The last time Hollywood writers went on such a strike was over 15 years ago, 2007, 2008. Although their demands were more or less the same as today, they inhabited a much different media environment. Those were the days of big movie franchises, Marvel, Harry Potter, and the Disney princesses, popular TV on the mainstream networks, The Office, CSI, Law and Order, and the rise of peak TV, Breaking Bad, Mad Men, The Wire. Although reality television and game shows threatened to replace scripted entertainment, collective burnout started to set in at that point. As for streaming services, they didn't really exist yet. Netflix was using snail mail to send out DVDs to people who were still overcoming the trauma of blockbuster video. (laughs) Writers of those days had some leverage. And their absence was felt by most people. According to some estimates, the Los Angeles economy lost over $2 billion because major film studios and ancillary businesses were forced to shut down. In the end, the strike was largely successful as writers were able to have better compensation for their work and were included in upcoming streaming productions. This time around, the media climate is not quite as friendly to writers, even though a demand for them is still high, if not higher than the involvement of new production companies like Amazon and Apple. There is not the same amount of profit to be made from scripted entertainment. Furthermore, most people now watch their favorite shows and movies through various streaming platforms, an altogether different model for media. Not only does this mean that certain shows and movies may not make as much money, but also that the writing done for these projects is not as regular. For example, the typical 20-plus episodes for one season of a show from the early 2000s is twice as long as a season for most shows today. Hmm. So we talked about that Mm -hmm. with the mini rooms thing uh, on Monday. Is like you know, the mini rooms thing you usually last the first 10 weeks, and now that's what a lot of shows are. Right. 10 yeah. weeks long. They're not these giant big long productions, four, which most people like mm-hmm. because, especially for story driven ones, like, you know, episodic sitcoms or whatever, yeah, you want as many as you can get, sure. Mm-hmm. But like for story driven things where you have an overarching story, yeah. Smallville would have benefited so greatly. From shorter seasons. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because you would have the story move forward. Right. At a pace that didn't feel like it had to drag on for most of a year. Because it's not a year-long story. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. And so you'd have the first couple episodes that establish a story. And then you'd have a bunch of bullcrap episodes that have nothing to do with the story. That they right. just have to fill. And they might put like a little bit at the end right. to, you know, remind you. Hey, right. You know, There'll be a tease here, a tease yeah. there for something that's coming up yeah. at the mid-season finale. Right. And then you'll have the two <laughs> in the middle that are highly about the story again. And then another set of bullcrap episodes that have nothing to do with it. Just and then the fillers. finale and you yeah. finally get in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that's what's really going well with things like Stranger Things and all these shorter done shows is that you can focus on just making them. And, a, you know, a mini series essentially mm-hmm. is what, you're, what they used to be called, mm-hmm. where every episode is focused on the story. There will be individual elements for every episode that make them special, mm-hmm. but still the overarching story is being told. Mm-hmm. Uh, but even for shows that are kind of individual episode focused, such as, again, Star Trek Strange New Worlds, those episodes, there is an overarching story, but... It's usually done because it's only 10 episodes in the first and the last. Mm. And there will be some talk about it in the middle. But each episode gets to be different and have its own fun. And there will be some, you know, interpersonal storylines going throughout it. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. It, can be, it can be different and fun and it won't get tiresome because right. there's only 10. Right. You know, yeah. it's, it's not just freak of the week. Mm-hmm. episodes where you're just like, oh, I'll just keep cranking these out. <laughs> That's fine. What the, it's like, that was like those first, first three seasons of Smallville. Mm-hmm. Just like oh, every, every, <laughs> every week. Okay. Mm-hmm. What weird power does this guy have? <laughs> okay. Oh, she can eat everything. Okay. <laughs> wow. This one has bugs. All right. <laughs> the first one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and so yeah, TV really has changed. Um, but even then, uh, there's a, there's a lot to watch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If, if nothing new ever comes out and what is on streaming services right now is all we had, 
both of us would be fine. <laughs> We'd watch our favorites on repeat like most of us already do. Mm -hmm. We catch up on series or movies that might have slipped by us. That we're like, I don't have time to start that series. Mm -hmm. So we just never watched it. Well, now we can go back and watch it. Mm -hmm. Give lesser known media a chance. Something that we just like, oh, that's not worth my time. We're like, right. well, you know, hmm, let's give it a shot. Maybe I like these. <laughs> maybe I like K-dramas and I don't know about them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> chance that we wouldn't otherwise have the time. Finding hidden gems, sharing them with others. Like, it would be fun. Uh, mm -hmm. We are no longer beholden to primetime television. You know, the, the, the first sure. strike. That's first true. strike was killing people. Who were yeah. desperate for new episodes of The Office. You know what I mean? Just like, oh my gosh, when is The Office coming back? <laughs> I remember when they first uh, had the promo of new, uh, new episodes of The Office. And you and I were just like, praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah. Just, we, were like, like, we couldn't believe it. It was like Christmas morning seeing that preview. I'm guessing what we did during the first strike was just watch a lot of DVDs. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. That's exactly what it is. But now people don't have DVDs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the first episode back was the dinner party. One of the best episodes of the whole series. That's true. So good. That's true. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we were mostly sub watching whatever was on, whatever the cable channels put on or the few DVDs that we owned. That's like that's all we had. Yeah. So we needed television to start cranking back up. Right. Uh, but now with streaming services and being able to watch whatever we want and not have to buy all the DVDs for it. Like we, you know, it's just, you know, we bought, when we were married, we were buying a season of scrubs every couple of months mm -hmm. just so we could watch scrubs, mm -hmm. scrubs and Smallville. I mean, we were buying those as they mm -hmm. came out mm -hmm. and like, it was so tedious to have to get those. It cost so much money to have them for us when we were younger mm -hmm. and then we had them and we watched through watched through Smallville a lot, but we watched through Scrubs what, two times before now it's yeah. everything's on streaming. So right. you can watch it all here and we gave them away. And now we don't even own pretty much any DVDs except for the ones that we have for the car. Right. With the kids. <laughs> <sighs> uh, there's also a matter of support. So uh, the first time around, America was largely united in support for the writers. However, this time around, the conservative side of America is a little less enthusiastic at large. Uh, mm -hmm. Writing has become increasingly focused on what conservatives call woke ideology. Mm -hmm. More and more stories are focused on liberal ideas and characters and less on storylines that are more universally appealing. So we're like, it's all right if you stop right, writing yeah. like that. There's a large number of people on the right who would be just as happy to see Hollywood collapse in on itself. Mm -hmm. Uh, I could see that. Yeah. I have to pre-watch every children's thing mm -hmm. that comes out because I don't know what kind of crap they're going to stick in there. Mm -hmm. And it was, a, it was a weird, it's a weird shift to have mm -hmm. been a part of to see how it went from let's keep anything that might even be slightly controversial out of kids programming because it doesn't need to be there. Right. To taking a bunch of stuff that is still arguably very controversial to 90% of Americans and go, no, this is just basic stuff. Mm -hmm. This is stuff everybody needs to see as soon mm -hmm. as they're preschoolers. Mm -hmm. Like this is, I'm weirded out by it mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and how, how quickly it happened. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> like I understand the need for the stuff to exist and I don't want to have anybody, think that you know we want to erase you from you know humanity or whatever but at the same time can we let our kids be old enough to even understand what's happening right and let us have those conversations with them before preschool preschool shows do before blues clues mm -hmm. does i don't understand i don't yeah. understand the need so yeah so i can i see that so to wrap up here's what they're facing Studios aren't feeling the pinch yet. Strikers are. Writing needs to be vastly different these days. Writing needs are vastly different these days. And so trying to go back to the old ways of the writer's room, not necessarily as easy as it sounds. Mm -hmm. There is so much pre-existing content available right now at any time at anyone's fingertips that people watching TV aren't feeling the pinch. 
Yeah. And mm-hmm. support from the country is less solid than last time. Now, we talked about reality TV at the end of yesterday's show mm-hmm. and how that was like the big rise of it. Mm-hmm. But you can't do that now. Because reality TV has also evolved in mm-hmm. these last 15 years. Not really reality. To need writers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Almost all reality TV still involves a lot of writers now. Mm-hmm. And so you can't you can't just throw on a... A camera in a house. A camera in a house. People in yeah. you, can't just, you can't do John and K plus eight now <laughs> on primetime TV. You got to have... Uh, there's too much production. It's mm-hmm. got things have gotten better in reality TV and it would be noticeable if they got worse. So I feel like it's all fake anyway. That everything. The, the reality TV. I feel like it's fake. Even it's fake reality. Even the mini golf show that we love so very much. <laughs> What's it called? Holy moly. Holy moly. Yeah. Holy moly. I'm watching Crime Scene Kitchen mm-hmm. with Joe McHale. That ain't fake. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the... You're talking about like The, the Bachelor and stuff like yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Love Island. And Love Island. It's, Temptation yeah. Island. It's a Ooh. bunch of people that they've paid. I don't think so. I think that's just... These are the worst human beings on the planet. <laughs> and, we're pay- and we're paying them to be themselves. I don't think they're being themselves. That's what I'm saying. I think they're playing a character. Mm, I'm sure there's some, but I don't know. I think human, I think they I think made human, humanity is this bad. I think they <laughs> made that character for themselves and presented that uh, character, okay. knowing that that's what they were looking for. Well, in that case, everybody's playing a character. <laughs> okay, you want to get philosophical about it? We're all fakes. We're all phonies. Okay, you think I talk like this in normal time? <laughs> Do you think I'm outgoing? Do you think I want to talk to people? Mm. Heck no. Yeah. Heck no. <laughs> During the week, I am a little man in a tiny shell who lives in a four-walled booth in the back of a church. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, all right. Well, I believe the Writers Guild when they say they won't quit. I don't see a situation where they get everything they want. Mm. I think it will take much longer than most Hollywood execs think before they cave. But I think it might, they might be doomed to cave or compromise in the end. Mm. I don't know how this ends. I do think we're in for a long haul. I think 2023 is shot. Yeah. Ain't nobody coming back before next year. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. But I don't know how much longer they can last after that. Right. Especially after Christmas comes and goes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know how much they can last. This week, we're taking a look at the writer's strike. Now, we kind of actually talked the strike to death. So today, we want to take a broader discussion from a Christian perspective and ask the question, is it a sin to strike? Now, I don't ask this question lightly, and I know that there's a lot of nuance, but that's exactly what we're going to be talking about. So when searching for opinions online, I have found varying opinions. I'm sure. Uh, But it seems largely to be a matter of why and Mm -hmm. how. Mm -hmm. Uh, So before I share other opinions, I want to um, know what your answer to that question would have been just off the cuff. If I asked you, do you think it's a sin to go on strike? What would you say? First, I'd want to know what type of strike, if it's, um, you know, me going on strike because I didn't get my way or me going on strike because I don't believe in what they're doing. Hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. if it's, I'm just pouting, so I'm going to go on strike, (laughs) you know. But I want it. But is that a (laughs) sin, you know, I don't. Uh, is that biblically wrong? I don't. I don't know. I don't think so. I would have probably said it's not necessarily a sin, um, but probably just not a great method. Yeah. Uh, like I feel like if you're if you're striking against something that you know is wrong biblically, maybe. Yeah. But you know if it's. 
I need more money in my job. I don't, I don't see that as a biblical issue. Issue. Yeah. Yeah. I think my mind conflates strikes and protests. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe and, I'm thinking. And I think those are similar, but different. Yeah. Yeah. Strikes usually seek change within an industry. Protests usually seek change within a society, you know, at large. And so protests often get overly emotional and they'll drag everybody else into those emotions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's where things can get dangerous. It can lead to like violence, riots, damage, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And that's stuff that I think we got to back away from. Uh, but let's let's read what some other people had to say. Uh, John John T. Langley, John T. Langley, uh, wrote an article about a transportation strike in the UK a year ago, and he said this. Uh, he said, "In a world where money is power, the most workers have precious little of both. The natural way of things is for people at the bottom of worldly hierarchies to be taken advantage of." When economic times are hard, those at the top tend to try and shift the burden onto those at the bottom even more. This is not an ideological anal analysis, but a biblical one. Humanity is sinful. Powerful people, fallen as they are, tend to build pyramids and often on the back of poor and weak majorities. The prophets knew this, and we Christians know there is a better way, an upside-down kingdom where the last will be first and the least of these become the yardstick by which our morality is measured. But we cannot make people righteous. We cannot force conversions or expect to the justified to become fully sanctified in everything they do. We would be foolish to rely on human righteousness to prevent injustice, and we rarely do. We have police and a legal system because we know instinctively that sometimes we must constrain people's actions. Their hearts cannot be counted on. Hmm. We also know that any one of us has little hope of successfully opposing a powerful person that seeks to profit unjustly from our work and refuses to share when we are in need. This is why we stand together. We march, we pray, we take Jesus's promise that when we forsake our individualism, he is with us. There is a broader lesson in addition to the spiritual. This is what unions do. This is all that strike action is. Strikes may not be spirit, a spiritual coming together, but they are a human one, seeking to provide a balance by weight of numbers to the power of the privileged few. That's an interesting perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think a key is that if Christians were to strike, if a Christian was to strike, they must still maintain a level of respect for the authority over us. Uh, that would include bosses. Like we always talk about one of the things that always gets brought up whenever there's uh, a president that we don't like in power. It's like, well, we still should be praying for the president. Right. <laughs> you know, we can't. It's like, well, they're the enemy. So mm -hmm. heaps of coal on them <laughs> and uh, nothing else. I, th you know, it's got to include authority over us has got to include our bosses. Mm. Right. Um, whether they're good or bad bosses, they're still an authority over us. God has given them authority over us on this earth. Mm hmm. And there has to be a level of how we treat them. It's got to be high. You know, it's got to be just like we would treat our, you know, it, it, we're supposed to love our enemies, right? So even if your boss is your right. enemy, you're supposed to love them. <laughs> um, and so insults, uh, violence, riots, I think those have no place in a Christian heart. Right. And therefore shouldn't have any place in a Christian who is on a strike. Uh, most of the articles that I read on this topic brought up uh, 1 Peter 2, 17 through 24. So I'm going to read that real quick. Okay. Uh, it says, honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. Servants, be subject to your masters with all respect, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the unjust. For this is a gracious thing when mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if you do good and suffer for it, you endure. This is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. 
When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. So this is uh, the the earlier verses of that are speaking about slate. Well, I guess it all is about slaves and masters. Mm -hmm. which, to be clear, is much different than how we think of slaves today. These were servants who were either sentenced to serve, like by a a court, a judge, or voluntarily went to serve to pay back a debt Mm -hmm. to usually that person that they're in service to. Right. So in many ways, these are employees. Uh, they're, They're servants more along the lines of what you see in Downton Abbey than they are, you know, early America. (laughs) Um, But I think this show, uh, this shows that acting in defiance of an employer should be cautioned against uh, because it says, you know, be subject to your masters with all respect, not only the good and gentle, but also to the unjust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, If a strike must be done, I do also think that this is saying it must be done in kindness and respect to authority. Mm hmm. What are we, what do you do you get anything what are your thoughts out of that? I would agree with that. And what this verse I think does for me is just puts it in all in perspective of you know when it starts talking about Christ's suffering because he did nothing wrong and mm-hmm. he suffered you know kind of as we go through life and get into all the woe is me's kind of thing, thinking, you know, understanding that there's more, like it's not just about this life is significant to me. I, it, I still don't, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I feel, I, I don't feel like there's anything morally wrong with a you know, quiet strike, I guess, a, a, a non-violent, uh, non- there we go. I'm like, what do, what do you call that? A calm. calm. <laughs> peaceful, truly peaceful. peaceful. Yeah. Yeah. Fiery, but mostly peaceful. Protest. Yeah. Yeah. Not that kind of, not that kind of strike. <laughs> like legit. <laughs> peaceful. Legit. No fires. Um, yeah. Cause I mean, even, even though it says, you know, be subject to your masters with all respect, I don't think you don't want to stick up for yourself. Yeah, or for everybody. Right. Because it's usually, if you know, if it's a strike, it's not usually a one-person yeah. strike. Yeah. You've seen a couple of those, and they're pretty sad. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> yeah, it's usually... I a, went on strike the other day, yeah. No one showed up. <laughs> I'll strike right now. Uh, there's, there's usually... It's usually something that has been needed to be addressed for a long time. Right. It's usually mm-hmm. something that uh, seems apparent to everybody is mishandled, mm-hmm. mishandling the situation and refusal to change. And it is affecting usually a large group of people uh, unjustly. And that's usually how strikes start. And I don't find that... I don't find participating in one of those, uh, I don't see how that would be sinful unless you yourself are going beyond that into a insulting, violent, or whatever mm-hmm. behavior. Mm-hmm. Um, but even then, that would be an individual. If you are protesting, you're, you're, you're a part of a strike, participating in a strike, uh, respectfully, and other people go cause bigger problems. Right. I don't think that's on you. As long as you're not a part of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The issue with Christianity, and part of that is kind of hinted at here, is that we kind of have a different mindset in that we're we're expecting discomfort, right? As 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 Christians here, we're we're supposed to expect to not have our best life here. Mm Hmm. We know we're going to be taken advantage of at times. We know uh, we're going to be hated at times. We know that our faith 
is going to put us at a disadvantage in this world. Pretty much always. And so you have to find a line between do I respectfully accept what is happening here as future glory, mm. you know, suffer this now knowing that, mm -hmm. you know, first for last, last will be first kind of thing in the end. And then I think there's a line where, okay, this is an injustice mm -hmm. and now I should speak up on behalf of not myself, but others. And so I think it really just comes down to, like what you said earlier, is it a matter of selfishness or not? Yeah. Is it me mm -hmm. or is it us? Right. If you not striking is detrimental to everybody else uh, for a cause that is a just cause, mm -hmm. I don't see you striking being a problem. If you're striking simply for your own personal gain or if whatever kind of um, protest that you have, whether that be uh, just phoning it in at work or whatever until you get your raise or whatever like that. Right. That I feel is the wrong mindset. Right. Um, and there's a, there's a lot of that going on right now too with mm -hmm. the quiet quitting and the acting your wage kind of thing. There's a fine line between actually doing what you were paid for and phoning it in. Right. Mm -hmm. And saying that you're doing what you're getting paid for until you get a raise. You have to make that balance of if you, what you're doing is right and respectful and if what you're doing is detrimental and selfish. Mm -hmm. you, have to, you have to be able to make that call. Mm -hmm. and so I think that's where the gray area comes in in this. Uh, in any case, I don't, think, I don't think it's sinful per se, just the action. I don't think you right. could call the act of striking sinful. Right. I don't think it's a black and white issue. I think it's a gray issue mm -hmm. determined by the how and the why. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, I feel like a lot of sin is your mindset on it mm -hmm. as well. You know, I mean, the whole, you shall have no other gods before me. You know, that's not just a don't bow down to physical <laughs> idols like bail you know we're like <laughs> you know naturally christians talk about today's equivalent to gods that we put before mm -hmm. our god you know your phone things things that we worship and devote our time to yes that, yeah. which social media fandoms can become yeah Mm -hmm. you, you can be so devoted to a, a fandom thing that you like on this planet that you put that well before God. Yeah. And that's a danger too. Yeah. <laughs> the, the classic is, you know, you, you don't go to church that Sunday because the big football game's on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've heard that my Goodness whole life. Goodness gracious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, I just, I also... You know, I, I feel like our version of suffering in America, I, I, I don't like the comparison to, to how Christ suffered. Mm, exactly. You know, I, me not getting paid as much is not equivalent, and we should not think that is equivalent you know, and so a lot of, a lot of times, you know, Christians say, well, we're supposed to suffer, you know, we're suffering, but I, I think that verse for is this talking church, about to be <laughs> suffering for are. Christ, not, yeah. not suffering in your own world, suffering for Christ. Right. That's completely yeah. different. And so, well, like when I talked, talked about that earlier, I'm thinking of like, um, laws or whatever in this country that right. that might go against our biblical standard or you know the again the the woke ideology kind of mm -hmm. idea that was brought up earlier uh yesterday you know these kind of things are are going to happen and they're going to become mainstream mm -hmm. and we are going to be put by the wayside in a mm -hmm. lot of a lot of portions of society yeah. that is something that's going to happen. It, we were told it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. And at what point, 
how far do you go to fight it? I guess is the point. How, where do you fight it and where do you accept it? Mm -hmm. And then just try and be, you know, loving to those people. Mm -hmm. Um, battling a government, battling a sector of society and starting a war of ideology or battling for hearts and minds individually. Right. And, sh and we do our fighting through love mm -hmm. and through showing them the love of Christ mm -hmm. and being there for them and being the love of Christ to them long before they come to Christ. There's something to say though about suffering and, uh, you know, what, look at China mm. and how fast Christianity grows under the threat of death. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe that's what, that's what that means. You know, you're going to be suffering for, for some reason. Christianity spreads more to those who suffer. Mm -hmm. Those who <clears throat> feel they need God and need Christ. <laughs> We just recently learned from a, a guest at our church that India right now is going through a bit of a religious upheaval mm -hmm. as they have elected a leader there that is very um, Hindu? Hindu Hinduism only mm -hmm. in India. And he said it's very likely that this leader will be elected for life because that's what a lot of Hindus, what a lot of Indians want. Uh, and so Christians are kind of being exiled from the country. Right. It's like you, you better get in now right? as a missionary because they're right. going to close their borders to you. I'm interested to see how Christianity will still explode in mm -hmm. India in the coming years mm -hmm. when it becomes illegal. <laughs> right, right. That seems to yeah. be how it's... I mean, from the moment... <laughs> It happened, like, you know, during Christ being on earth, it was upheaval, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. When he died and came back, it was upheaval, and all the apostles had to secretly spread it. Yeah. It's just kind of amazing. So, to wrap <laughs> it back to striking, <laughs> which we got a little bit away from. Uh, that wasn't your fault. <laughs> I'll blame you. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> as a Christian, should you participate in a demonstration like this? It is still your responsibility to exemplify Christ mm -hmm. and to be loving and to be respectful and to show love, not only for the fellow people that are striking alongside you, but also for the people that are against you, whether it just be someone that doesn't agree with the strike or the people that you are striking against. The goal is never to be in conflict. The goal is to build bridges, at mm. least for a Christian. Mm. And so I think often that's going to mean some compromising, but it's also going to just mean, you know, being a good person <laughs> being the person <laughs> being the person God is building you into and relying not on, uh, the emotions of your heart, uh, to lead you astray, but to what you know, to be true, relying mm -hmm. on that. <clears throat> yeah. So again, no black and white answer. And there rarely is when we ask that big question, mm -hmm. is this in the drink? Is this in to get a tattoo? All these things. <laughs> Rarely, we've we've done this in different podcasts and shows throughout the years. We every now and then will have a big "Is it a sin for the X?" or whatever this is, mm -hmm. and almost always it's a big gray area, mm -hmm. and it comes down to the individual. It comes down to certain situations. It comes down to whys and hows, and uh, it is up to us to walk that line. Mm -hmm. So, good luck to you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you for joining us for Rise and Shine Nerds. We want to invite you to get behind the scenes by joining our LT and Discord community. Once you've joined at lovethynerd.com slash Discord, simply go to Channels and Roles and click on the Rise and Shine Nerds channel to gain access to it. You can help us plan shows and segments and even be on the show yourself on occasion. Subscribe to the show on your favorite podcast app or through the Love Thy Nerd YouTube channel so you don't miss an episode. And tell us what you think of the show via our socials at Rise and Shine LTN on Facebook and Twitter. Once again, I'm Radio Matt. I'm Deidre. As always, a reminder. Jesus loves you, nerds.